Hello, today what I want to do is go over the simplest but highly effective survival kit. Now, I have done many survival kits. They cover a lot of areas and would totally work in many, many situations. This kit is the same. This kit is just a simple version, a very simple to use and simple to carry version of a kit. It's right here in this haversack. I put it in this. You could use a backpack or you could use a purse. But it weighs just just over the three pound mark. So I'm going to go over the gear in this kit but I'm also going to go around my thoughts on the gear in this kit and why I chose it. So stay tuned. You may learn a thing or two, or it may refresh your memory. If not, just enjoy. So first off, how I carry a haversack, I usually put it in behind me so it's not catching on things as I'm walking. Also have a water bottle in my hand. I always prefer a stainless steel single walled. I want to bring this out just to show you with what I got even plastic would work. Now I always carry my belt knife. I've got in a small pouch right on the side here. This has a ferro rod in it, a sharpening uh, stone as well. And on this side I have bear spray and a folding saw. So I've got tools right there that I can gather firewood and work on many projects. So I'm going to start this by saying that the objects in this kit can work, just the objects in this kit can work in many situations, in many parts of the world, three seasons. Around here I could get three seasons out of this kit. I could get more with more work, but it always starts with your own skill set and your own training of what you can do with your gear usually. So I'm going to open this up and show you what I have first. I have a first aid kit. Now I added a first aid kit and I added a compass right there so a first aid and compass many many people carry these but this kit is mostly built around what you need to stay alive okay orienteering is something that I suggest anyone that goes in the woods takes because it can help you not get lost. Or you may be stranded and still know your way out. First aid, I have carried first aid kit for years and only have you had to use it like twice for a couple band-aids. So it's one of those, these are two great carries because if you need them, it's better to have them. But it's one of those things that they're a different subject compared to what's in this kit. Although, you see, I have put them in there. Now, I also want to say that many people can add to this kit and design it for whatever your skill set is and also your area. So, what I chose in here, that's what I suggest that these would be great options and I know there's many out there that would suggest more. Although, this here can get most people by in most situations. So, for safety's sake, a good headlamp. Two, if you want to carry them with extra batteries. This one here, usually I take out the batteries so they don't corrode and such and put them in before I need them. 
This time, it doesn't work because the last battery, I put a piece of paper between the battery and the terminal. So when I want to use this, I just pull out the paper. So this is great for safety and it can also be a morale boost when you hear the little crunching and such through the woods at night, you can look and see what it is. So I always suggest some sort of lighting. Now also, I've got a 50 feet of paracord right here and a backup smaller pocket knife as well as a lighter, disposable lighter. Now, the disposable lighter is there if I need fire, but I put this kit together so you are not fire dependent in most cases. So there's only three more items in this Aversac. And they control most important areas that keep our heart beating. <laughs> that is our core temperature and hydration. So let's talk hydration right here. I have used this for years. This is the Sawyer Mini. This is good for a hundred thousand gallons. So this will last you a lifetime if you take care of it. One time purchase. I'm going to leave links where you can check out these on Amazon, Canadian Amazon. And you can check these out and such because this here has been a great carry that I have used for years. So this here is a cleaning syringe. You put clean water in it and you squirt back through the part you drink from so you're pushing out all the debris and such. That's why it lasts so long. But this will screw right on to a soda bottle. You have a straw as well that you can hook on the bottom. So this allows me to just dip my plastic water bottle into this stream beside me and then use this as a straw and drink. There's no need for boiling. We're not fire dependent. If you can get a system where you're not fire dependent, you're far better ahead. And what I love about this as well is they give you, and you can buy extra, bags that I can fill this up so I have an extra 500 milliliters that I can take with me as well as my water bottle. So for the price and for what this can do, one time lifetime purchase if you take care of it, then it's definitely worth the carry and it can certainly help keeping your hydration needs where you want them. You do not want to get dehydrated and this you just drink out of it. It uh, does not do chemicals um, so or pesticides but in my streams around here I've drank out of swamps with this and I have been fine. So it's perfect for my area you know it's according on your own area. So my hydration needs are filled without fire. This here I can use it many different ways. So it is filled. Also I have an extra container, my water bottle. Now let's go into core temperature and a very simple solution for that as well. So right here is an SOL sport utility blanket. Now this is a thicker blanket and it is, I'm sure it's 8 feet, but I'm not sure. I think it's 5.5 five for width, should say on here. But it's 6 times stronger than its competitors. Reflects 95% of a heat bat. Windproof and waterproof. So, this is just a good option. I have used this for shelter before in a lean-to situation. Now, a lean-to situation is great when you're need a fire out front for warmth but we're not going to need a fire so 
This is great. That's also going to block rain and such and keep you dry, which also helps with your core temperature is staying dry. So this is going to be and can be with that cordage I have strung up into a shelter within five minutes compared to a natural shelter that may still leak and can still take hours to build. Carrying a tarp is your best choice for shelter in my opinion. Just because of the ease of it. You can set up a shelter in five minutes, then go get firewood if you need fire, or do what you need to do. You're not spending half a day building a shelter. So tarps are the best way to go. Natural shelters are great if you don't have a tarp, in my opinion. Now, there's also different tarps you can use now. Because you're not fire dependent. You can use a 10 by 10 Still nylon tarp and you can set it up into like a pop tent style or even one with doors that you can close yourself right in you don't need the um, you don't need the reflection property of a lean-to with a fire when you don't have a fire so you can close yourself in so that can help block wind and a lot of rain so that's another option you can get very compact and small um, lightweight tarps that would fit in this as well that are 10 by 10 so that's another option I'm going to show you the last piece that is very important in any kit in my opinion that's right here a sleeping bag you cannot get any simpler than staying warm, saving calories, than crawling in a sleeping bag. That is going to control your core temperature, and it's the simplest way to control your core temperature. Either clothing or a sleeping bag. This is rated for 2 Celsius, just, so just straight around the, you know, freezing mark. So, Anything at 2 Celsius and above, I don't need a fire. I am covered. Many places in the world does not even get down to, you know, 2 Celsius. So, it's all according on your area, but this is so small and compact. Like I said, all of this was like 3.2 pounds. So... This can really save your life big time. And the reason why is because if you hurt yourself and you can't get up and walk around and such, you can crawl in this and still stay warm. Now, that is one of your best. I keep a sleeping bag in my car. I have been broke down before on the highway and my car almost out of gas and I had to sit for three hours on the highway. I actually pulled off on a side uh, side road and then I turned my car off and it was like minus 20. Well, I had a sleeping bag that I carry in the winter time in my car. I just crawled in that and waited until the line started moving again and then I was able to go. So if you break down and such, carrying a sleeping bag that's rated more than or lower than the temperatures that are going to be expected outside is a good option in a car. So that's just another um, tip for you. That's what I do. I also carry jackets and such, ski pants and stuff all in my car in the winter just in case I need them. Now, so what we have is a sleeping bag, which is the simplest way to control core temperature, in conjunction with a tarp to keep you dry. So you have a tarp, you've got a sleeping bag, which is very lightweight, compact, and also we have your dehydration with the Sawyer Mini and your water bottle. And then you have a couple odds and ends that you can add. So just those four items, water bottle, 
the Sawyer Mini tarp and sleeping bag cordage of course you've got you know your system out here that can get you by in most situations so I hope this helps and I hope that my thoughts around this can give people ideas but if you want to see me actually setting this up and show you how this would work let me know in the comments that'll be another video take care I thank you for watching and stay safe.